Last week, NASA released the first full-frame image from its newest planet-hunting spacecraft, and astronomers have already used it to detect two brand new extrasolar planets. Welcome back to Launchpad. I'm Christian Reddy, your friendly neighborhood astronomer. In my previous video, I talked about the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS. NASA released the very first full-frame image, but flying in under the radar were three new papers submitted by three teams of astronomers announcing the discovery of TESS's first two exoplanets. Now, it's very important to remember that the papers that have been submitted are what are called preprints. In other words, they have not yet been vetted by peer review or the editors of the journals they've been submitted to. So with those caveats out of the way, let's talk about what they found out. Now, TESS uses the transit method to detect planets around other stars. That means it watches for a repeating drop-off of light caused by a planet making a regular periodic orbit around the star. Not only that, but the larger the drop-off in light, the larger the planet must be. So astronomers can measure things such as a planet's orbital period, its distance from its host star, and even its radius. The first planet was discovered around the star Pi Mensa. This star is already known to host one planet called Pi Mensae b. Pi Mensae b is a super Jupiter that takes about 5.7 years on a very elliptical orbit to go around its star. But this new planet, Pi Mensae c, is a very different kind of animal. It orbits its host star once every 6.3 days. Yeah, its year is less than one of our weeks. But in order to have such a short orbital period, Pi Mensae c has to orbit at a distance of just 0.07 astronomical units. That's about 7% the distance from the Earth to the Sun. So yeah, New Year's parties every week or so? Not bad, right? But the second planet that was discovered is even stranger than Pi Mensae c. LHS 3844b orbits around a red dwarf star. That is, it's a star that is smaller and cooler than our Sun. However, LHS 3844b's period is only 11 hours. That's its year. That puts this particular planet at something like 0.006 astronomical units, or 1 6,000th the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Crazy, right? Now, both of these planets are larger than the Earth, and they're presumed to be rocky planets, although we really can't tell this for sure just by looking at the light curve data. Nevertheless, it's widely suspected that these two planets fall into what are called the super-Earth category. They're a little bit larger than Earth, and probably not gaseous giants like Neptune or Saturn. To really know more about these planets, we need to follow up with larger ground-based telescopes or the James Webb Space Telescope to study their atmospheres. Assuming, of course, they even have atmospheres to study. Pi Mensae c has an estimated surface temperature of over 1100 Kelvin, but because LHS 3844b orbits a red dwarf star, it's nearly 800 Kelvin. Still, that's probably going to be plenty hot enough to have stripped away any atmospheres that these planets may once have had. It's also likely that these planets are tidally locked to their stars. That means the daytime sides of these planets are in constant daylight and are being blasted by the scorching heat of their host stars. Their far sides, on the other hand, are probably plunged into perpetual darkness. By the way, perpetual darkness was the name of my progressive metal band in college. So the possibilities that life could exist on either of these two worlds are probably next to zero. But we won't know for sure until we can do some follow-up studies with the James Webb Space Telescope or the upcoming super telescopes on the ground. After all, all we can really learn about these planets right now are just their orbital distances, their periods around their stars, and their sizes. And from there we can calculate things like their effective surface temperatures, but that's about it. Now because TESS only spends 27 days observing a single sector, it's going to be sensitive to these really short period planets, at least at first. However, over time, it will become possible to detect longer period planets because the fields that are near the ecliptic poles will overlap with one another, allowing more observation time. If TESS gets an extended mission, it could even observe both of these hemispheres for a lot longer. Now, there's no way I'll be able to report on every single planet TESS discovers, but TESS has only been at it for about a month before it bagged its first two planets. There's going to be a lot of really cool, strange new worlds coming down the pike. 
Now, if you haven't seen my video already about tests, you definitely want to check that out so you can learn more about the test mission. And if you'd like to learn more about how astronomers detect planets around other stars, feel free to check out a video that I've done on that as well. I'll have links to them here and in the description below. So what do you think about these first announcements? Let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to check it out. And if you'd like to join me on this journey through this amazing universe of ours, well please make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new videos. Until next time, keep watching the skies. This planet orbits the star L8. Am I getting this thing right? 38. <laughs> This planet orbits the star LHS 3844.